Iday Family History and Shadelands Ranch by Alex Wood. The research I will present was gathered for a graduate level history course entitled Public History at Cal State East Bay. In the course, each student partnered with a local historical institution. I partnered with the Walnut Creek Historical Society and Shadelands Ranch Museum. I want to thank the Walnut Creek Historical Society and the Shadelands Ranch Museum for this opportunity. I also want to specifically thank Sheila Rogstad, who allowed me access to Shadelands Ranch during the height of the pandemic and led me to excellent source material. I want to thank my professor for the public history course, Mary Ann Irwin, for facilitating a great class and encouraging me to continue to work on this project. And finally, I would like to thank Don Ames, who is a descendant of the Iday family, for providing many of the amazing pictures and sources I will share with you. I will present the sources I use to tell the story of the lives of the Iday family and their descendants. First, I wanted to share my inspiration and approach to my research project. Shadelands Ranch Museum is the site of an early 20th century ranch home built on land that once consisted of 500 acres of fruit and nut orchards. The impressive Colonial Revival design home, now maintained as a museum, preserves the history of the ranch and home's owners, the Penniman family. In the back of the museum stand two modest one-story structures, each about the size of the larger home's porch. Although not original to Shadelands Ranch, these buildings represent the homes of the farmers who worked on the 500 acres in the early to mid 20th century. The foreman, Toshitaro Aide, was an immigrant from Japan. He lived and worked at Shadelands Ranch with his wife, Sui, for over 30 years. Their lives are less documented than the Penniman family, but historical records and ancestral documents reveal that the Aide family were part of the early Japanese immigrant community and that their roots run deep in Contra Costa County. Toshitaro and Sui married in Japan and had one adopted child who passed away before the couple emigrated. Leaving from the port of Yokohama, located far from their home city of Fukuoka, Toshitaro and Sui left Japan in 1896. Generations later, the Aide family said relatives immigrated to the United States because they heard the streets were lined with gold and so that they could have a better life in the land of opportunity. The couple traveled on the SS Yamaguchi Maru across the Pacific Ocean to Honolulu. Toshitaro spent roughly five years working on a dairy farm in Hawaii, and by 1906, the couple made their way to the San Francisco Bay Area, settling in Concord. While Toshitaro was establishing himself in Contra Costa County and beginning his tenure at Shadelands Ranch, Sui had returned to Japan. Arriving back to the United States in 1907, Immigration Services detained Sui because she showed signs of carrying the contagious disease trachoma. At the Angel Island Immigration Station, the Board of Special Inquiry detained and questioned Sui, as well as other immigrants coming from across Asia. Sui was denied entry into the United States and detained for nearly two weeks before she returned to Japan. Undeterred, Sui again made the long journey months later, braving two months-long boat trips across the Pacific Ocean and difficulties with the immigration system. Sui reunited with her husband at Shadelands Ranch. Toshitaro was foreman of Shadelands Ranch and also worked as a Japanese labor contractor. Sui helped with a payroll operation, also working at Shadelands Ranch. In the book Lotus, author Shaeko Tahira describes that the Penniman Ranch, now Shadelands, was the headquarters of the migratory laborers. 
writing about her mother's experience as an immigrant to California, Tahira notes that Sui, or Mrs. N. Ide, came from the H.C. Hall Ranch on Rieles Valley Road in Pleasant Hill. After a formal introduction, she learned that Mrs. Ide was from Fukuoka Ken. Eager to learn of each other's experiences, they chatted back and forth, laughing at what had surprised them. Tahira's recollections indicate that Toshitaro and Sui were part of a welcoming group to fellow Japanese immigrants. In 1913, about five years after the couple's arrival to the United States, the state of California passed an alien land law that barred aliens ineligible to citizenship from owning land and limited their leases to three-year periods. In 1920, California passed an additional alien land law, barring the transfer or the lease of land specifically to Japanese nationals, preventing the lease or purchase of land by any corporation in which Japanese people held a majority of the stock. By law, Toshitaro could not own land and put to use his farming skills on his own ranch. Despite laws limiting their freedom, Japanese immigrants bounded together in order to support and provide opportunities for themselves and their neighbors. Key to the endurance of Japanese immigrants in California, according to historian Valerie Matsumoto, was the development of the vital economic, religious, and educational institutions that fostered their economic independence and cultural cohesion. Toshitaro and Sui were active members of their community and helped maintain Japanese cultural institutions in Contra Costa County. As noted, Toshitaro helped Japanese immigrants find work and Sui welcomed fellow immigrants to the area. Toshitaro was a member of the Hokubai Butukokai, a military virtue society, a type of martial arts organization. Additionally, Toshitaro was one of the Concord Japanese Language Institute founders, which served as the community center for social and cultural activities for Japanese immigrants. The first Japanese language school in Contra Costa, according to Tahira, was held in a rented room at Yamashita's boarding house on Willow Pass Road between Mount Diablo and Grant Streets. Later, it was two small rooms rented from the Mankishi Matsumoto Chicken Farm at the Adobe in Concord. Also, fruit drying sheds on the Shadelands Ranch were utilized. Toshitaro and Sui who were 40 and 34 respectively when they settled in Contra Costa, did not have any children in the United States. Toshitaro and Sui did help take care of their family, including their nephew, Masasuchi, who later adopted the name Harry. As was customary for Japanese children born in the United States at the time, Harry was sent to Japan at the age of 14 months to be schooled and raised by family in Japan. He returned to the United States at the age of 13, speaking only Japanese, and lived with his uncle Toshitaro at Shadelands Ranch. According to his daughter, Don Ames, Harry spent much time with his aunt and uncle at Shadelands Ranch. During their visits, Harry constantly disagreed with his uncle Toshitaro and periodically ran away. Harry described his uncle as a sort of tyrant who lived a rather deviant lifestyle. Mrs. Ames notes that Harry recalled his uncle chasing him around the ranch with a shotgun. In the aftermath of the attacks at Pearl Harbor, in December of 1941, Japanese Americans were in fear because of rumors of retaliation in the onset of war between the United States and Japan. On February 19, 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066. This order arbitrarily suspended the civil rights of American citizens. Tahira expresses the uncertainty and fear 
many, including the Iodes, likely felt, writing, Where to? How? For how long? Will we be returned? Were we to become prisoners of war? Maybe those aren't the words to be used. They are harsh. But it's the truth, isn't it? I can't believe it. What have I done? What have we done? Who have we betrayed? Will we be separated? Will we live together as a family group? Or will we be separated according to sex and age? Will we be killed off as unwanted humans? Toshitaro was apprehended and conquered on March 28, 1942, and questioned by the Alien Enemy Hearing Board, consisting of an assistant United States attorney, an FBI agent, and an immigration inspector. The FBI charged him with being a member of the Hokubai Hotukukai, which Toshitaro denied. However, according to family stories, Toshitaro was a member of the organization. Nonetheless, the 75-year-old, who lived in the United States for over 30 years, was questioned as a possible enemy of the state. The board asked him over 100 questions during the hearing, including questions about his personal history, employment, marital status, and children. Present at the hearing was Toshitaro's friend and California Deputy Sheriff Ralph Harrison, who spoke on his behalf, stating that Toshitaro had an excellent character and reputation for honesty, peace, and quietude. Records of Japanese American incarceration by the United States government indicate the movement of Sui and Toshitaro during this period. Sui was incarcerated at the Turlock and the Gila River concentration camps. The couple was separated for most of their time while incarcerated. During this period, Toshitaro applied for repatriation, petitioning for him and his wife to return to their home country of Japan. Authorities denied the petition. At the Lordsburg concentration camp, Toshitaro suffered a cerebral hemorrhage. According to government officials, the stroke resulted in partial paralysis of his tongue, and his initial prognosis was poor. Friends of Toshitaro at Lordsburg advocated for his release due to his deteriorating health, and so that he could be cared for by his wife. It would take months before Toshitara was finally relocated to the Gila River concentration camp and reunited with Sui. Months after the couple was released from incarceration in March of 1946, Toshitaro passed away at the age of 78. After her husband's death, Sui returned to Japan, where she later passed away. Toshitaro's nephew, Harry, was also incarcerated, along with his wife, Chajeko. Writer for the La Miranda Weekly, Sophie Brassini, writing about Chajeko later in her life, shares her reaction to the incarceration orders. She remembers not being surprised to be sent away. We were used to being discriminated against. We were different. We had darker skin. It was normal. Rossini writes that Chajeko remembers the small garden they grew to try and get fresh vegetables, the constant walks to common bathrooms and cafeteria, the monotonous diet of beets and mutton stew, the cold winters and the hot summers. Even while enduring the immense difficulties of incarceration, the Aide family grew during this time. While incarcerated, Harry and Chajeko had two daughters, Tokiko Serene and Sachimi Millicent. Tahira describes her return from incarceration to Contra Costa, writing, Homecoming was not like coming home to your old place or old farmhouse. Mount Diablo, contrary to its name, stood high with her majestic head draped in soft clouds and thicker clouds around her waist. She stood high, guarding the valleys below her. She seemed to welcome us home, as if waiting for our return. My Mount Diablo brought tears to my eyes. She was the only welcoming committee to welcome us back to both Ignacio and Clayton Valleys.
Harry and Shijigo established themselves in Contra Costa, and in the late 1940s, Harry began a landscaping business. Harry and Shijigo had two more daughters, Patricia Yukimi, born in 1948, and Don Sumiyo, born in 1950. By 1950, the Aide family had moved to Lafayette, California, and Harry and Chijeko opened Harry's Nursery. The nursery was located on Mount Diablo Boulevard, and the Aide family lived in a house located just behind the nursery. Chijeko helped run the nursery, plant seedlings, and make bonsai, and taught ikibana, the Japanese art of flower arrangement. Harry was a mentor to many, and former employees and mentees of Harry went on to establish their own landscaping and nursery businesses. Toshitaro and Sui Aide spent over 30 years at Shadelands Ranch. Early members of the Japanese immigrant community, the Aides helped their family and their Japanese neighbors acclimate to the area. Despite facing legal discrimination and even incarceration, the Aide family persevered. The Aide family story illustrates the experiences of Japanese immigrants during the er eras of anti-immigration laws, assimilation to the United States, and incarceration of Japanese Americans. Toshitaro and Sui's nephew was a small business owner and celebrated member of his city within just one generation. Following the Aide's family ancestral history displays how each generation made a lasting contribution to their family and community.